Yeah, so I have uh, two brothers, one sister, and early years was like like anything else pretty much for a guy in a Mexican culture, eating a lot and always beating up your brothers, man. So my oldest brother, he was uh, into, you know, Bruce Lee and then he got into Taekwondo, uh, big martial artist. So I followed his footsteps and my dad was a professional boxer. When I was a child, his last fight actually, uh, we kind of remember him coming home beat up, uh, you know, his face smothered in and everything like that, but he loved it. He was a hard worker. You know, more than anything, you, you don't want him hurt, but, um, you know, it was cool having a dad who was a boxer. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I, I boxed since I was a kid. Um, I, 10 years old, 13 years old, just here and there, a little stuff with my dad. And then my brothers, we literally boxed in the backyard. And like I said, my dad was a pro, so he taught us all the stuff we needed to do. I did Taekwondo first, and that was actually when I was nine and uh, when I started doing the bell system there. My dad said nobody messes with wrestlers. And I was always a small dude. I was like 4'11". So, I was like, all right, I'll do that. And then he said, besides that, all the girls want to be with the wrestlers. <laughs> so because of my father, I went into wrestling and I was small and, you know, dominant. I, whatever I did, you know, I had that mentality of go forth full force. So that's what wrestling's about as well. Wrestling's about going full force, being strong and not giving up. And uh, it's the same thing I teach as well. I think the biggest impact for me was the Taekwondo and the Karate. Uh, but wrestling itself made me mentally strong because it's so such a hard sport. I think it's the hardest sport there is. You know, I didn't get to finish my the rest of my career as as a wrestler. I didn't get to do accomplish what I wanted to, and that was uh, me mentally being a little different at high school, not as strong mentally. Right after high school, I graduated at 17, um, focusing in on the karate part. I it blew me up uh, in a whole different world. You know, fought maybe about 17 AMI fights. Those are smokers they were called. They were crazy fights. You know, you fight guys like, okay, yeah, you guys go. You know, I fought a guy who was 175 and I was 135, but I loved it and I took him out, you know. Um, this was in kickboxing? This was it, this was a MMA open smoker. So actually, I actually went for a Muay Thai fight and the, there was no one there my size and there's the MMA guy there and he was like, you wanna go? And I was like, sure, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm here to work. You know, so, um, but right after that, after my, about my, it's about my 15th fight actually, I got hit by a diesel truck on my Harley. And it tore my knee apart. I don't know if you can actually get a close up of it. This whole thing right here. What? They said I wouldn't walk again, which I, I did within a year. And so after that, pretty much um, the doc said you can't fight no more. And I'm really stubborn as an athlete, so I, I thought that was like, no way, no way can someone take that away because I already did it since I was young. It wasn't so much I wanted to be a UFC fighter, it was something that was inside of me that I wanted to continue. And I didn't want an injury to stop it. So pretty much um, I fought, I, I recovered in a year and I fought three months after that. And it, my knee was still fresh. So after I fought, uh, the guy kicked my leg. He was actually 175er. Took it, took it good, took the win, came back and then took my knee brace off and my knee just opened up. And so I had to get re-surgery, the doc said, what are you doing? I fell apart, I, uh, I really knew I couldn't fight anymore. My foot turned black because my ankle actually moved and I had screws in there. So it was a wake up call and that point in my career is actually when I went dark. I started drinking a lot, I started not, the martial arts just went away because it, it went away from my life and I mentally just dropped. About two years, I was in this dark place. Um, and I told, uh, there's, a, there's a man named Jay Tan, he's a promoter. And uh, he promotes U of MMA. And I called him up and I said, hey man, I need to be with the top guys. I need to just start training again. I don't like my life. I don't like drinking. I don't like, this isn't me, man. I don't know what's going on, but I need to be somewhere. I know you know this guy, Eddie Bravo. I've always wanted to train with him. I know you know legend that all those fighters are awesome, man, in Hollywood can you get me in? Is there any way you can get me in? You know, because I don't want to go in as a white belt and just go and do stuff. I want to work. So he, uh, he made the intro to Eddie and me, and the first day I rolled with Eddie, man, it was like, you're a wrestler, huh? <laughs> I was like, yep. And it was like in love. He, he didn't just embrace me as like a fighter, or as like a jiu-jitsu guy. He already knew I had the wrestling background, just the way I popped, the way I moved, the way, you know, I mentally keep going. You know, my, my day one, it was like I've been there for years because Eddie's system is based off of wrestling. You know, and I loved it there. So my, my initial comeback was at Legends and 10 Planet in Hollywood. And that's when I made my comeback. And then 
it was like I was competing, I was, I was training, I was with these top fighters, and I was holding my own. And that was when I was like, I need to take this serious, I can come back, I can do it now. I went to Freddie Roach uh, for boxing over there at Wildcard. I was doing Legends, I was doing 10th Planet, everything was going good, and then 10th Planet closed and Legends closed because of the building. So I scrambled, and I went to a couple of gyms here and there that didn't fit me, and I, I, uh, I actually had this big thing happen where um, I decided to call up Mark Munoz at Rain. And I live in LA, he's about 40 miles from me, you know, and I told my wife, if we're gonna do this, you know, I've already been a year and a half back, if we're gonna do this, I have to have to make a full effort. I have to go to a team that's going to push me because I was working full time still as a man. Like I said, it's training that is important for me. Training is, um, is something that I do every day. I, it's, it's anything. It's, it's building knowledge. It's just like going to school. Um, but competing for me as an athlete, it was something that I felt that I didn't get a finish. You know, I didn't get a finish as an athlete. So competing now, it wasn't about just fighting this cage fighter or fighting this. It's fighting at that high level. To, this is for me as a person that my karate, that my wrestling, that my jiu-jitsu is better than yours, is, is at that level where I've worked so hard. Because my style is very different. I, you'll never see a fighter, they say like you, see, you relate to Machida when you fight. But Machida's not me and I'm not Machida. Machida doesn't shoot the way I shoot. I don't kick the way Machida kicks. So it's showing that my style to myself that I've done all this work, that I've done all this prep and now I can compete at this high level. You know, it's for me.